Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alec Reed. This is my channel, Alec Reed, and today we're reading a Nick and Narrative fanfiction on Wattpad. We are reading chapter four. Um, if you have not listened to the other ones, go ahead and watch those first, just so that you understand what's going on um, in this story, um, because it's not a regular Nick and Charlie fanfiction, so go watch the other ones first. Um, but anyway, let's jump right into the video. Chapter four, Nick. One latte, and I would like to take a cappuccino with me, please. An old lady asks, her hand shaking a bit when she holds the menu. Of course. Anything else? Um, no, that's good for me. She smiles and offers the menu to me. Thank you very much. We'll be back soon. I smile and walk away. I start to make a latte when the bell on top of the door clings again. Hello. I say, not looking to the person walking in, when I take the cup and start to warm the milk. Julia, could you start the cappuccino soon? Not yet. The lady at t table seven wants it with her. Yeah. She smiles and disappears to the back room. Well, hello, Mr. Cafe Boy. I look up to see Vivian leaning on the counter, Charlie next to her. I, I smile widely. Hi, what are you two doing here? Ordering something, what else? To see you? We laugh. I'm just joking, we came to surprise you. Well, that you did. I start to make a heart shape with the cream. Isn't this your first day? Yeah, I was here in work training last spring. I'm not just doing these from some TikTok videos I saw. We laugh. What are you making? Charlie asks. A latte with a picture of a heart on it. I wish I could see that. He groans. Why? I place the cream down. I don't know. It just sounds cool. He turns away. Vivian smirks towards him. I frown, but continue taking a small mug and placing the coffee on top of it. I put it on a tray, take a couple papers and a small sugar packet. Someone likes to add sugar, so that's why. Just a second, I say to the two and walk over to the old lady. And here you have a latte. The cappuccino will be here soon. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Nelson. She smiles. So do I. More confused, though. How do you know my name? From the tag on your shirt? I look down to see the name tag and laugh. Oh, right, of course. But enjoy your coffee. I smile and walk away after she thanks me again. Well, Mr. Nelson, Charlie smiles. Oh, God, stop. They laugh. Do you two want something, or did you just come to tease me? I ask, looking at Charlie. Um, what do you sell here? I can't see the menu. We laugh. Those jokes start to hurt me, or <laughs> for real. Anyway. We have croissants, pastries, muffins, sodas. I'll take a pastry. I smile. Okay, and you? I turn to Vivian, smirking. Um, I'll take a latte. And do the heart thing on it. I smile and nod. Julia walks in to make the cappuccino. This was Saber Seven. Yeah, she nods. You two can sit down, I say to the two who are leaning against the desk. Okay, coffee boy. Are you into teasing me? They walk away. She smiles to me over her shoulder. I haven't known Vivian for long. Neither has Charlie. But the us two have only talked in the corridors. Not much. And she's so friendly. Like, we would have known each other for a long time. I walk over to their table with a tray with a pastry on it with a plate and I hand it to Charlie and hand Vivian her latte. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Vivian smirks teasingly. I just roll my eyes. Well, enjoy. I walk away after looking at Charlie for a couple seconds. Who just I just had to look at him quickly because his face just freezes me in place. 
Who is that boy? Julia pokes my arms when I lean on the desk, writing some order. I realize my eyes are on Charlie. I blink and stand up fully. She's smirking. What? I smile confusedly. Julia is my friend. She is a year older than I am. We met at school last year. I don't know how, actually. We just started hanging out. She's also my teammate, Mateo's girlfriend. Who's that boy? She keeps smirking, pointing the desk with poking the desk with her hand where the two were sitting. Um I look at Charlie. He's laughing. His adorable dimples appear on his cheeks and his eyes go almost closed. I feel my cheeks burning. I brush my hands and to the front pockets and take a deep breath while turning to Julia. He's Charlie. You've might have heard of him. She thinks for a second. The blind boy from her school. I nod, looking down to hide my smirk. Oh, right. Shit, did that sound like bullying? She panicked, hand covering her mouth. I laugh. No, he has said it doesn't matter to him. That there isn't really any other way to say it, I guess. So, no. She sighs, relieved. Good. I turn back to the paper, popping the end of the pencil so it writes on the side, visible, and then disappear again. Soon, Julia sides herself between me and the glass display case with pastries. You like him. She's whisper smiling. I roll my eyes. I do not. He's my roommate. Isn't it just better? Imagine all the things you could do in Julia. She smiles. Okay, fine. So, you like him. I sigh as she pokes me in the arm again, when I don't respond for a second. I look at her quickly before look, turning to look down, playing with my pencil again. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. I whisper, isn't he very cute? She tells me to look at him. I do. Charlie starts laughing again, then covers his face. I can't stop the smile appearing on my lips. It just comes so naturally. And handsome and talented, adorable, funny, has a very good body and his soft curly hair, eyes, his little nose, puffy lips, jaw, sharp jawline, dimples, fuck everything. I drop the pencil and my head on my hands, fingers brushing through my hair and his scent is straight from heaven. I take a deep breath. You are falling, Nelson. Oh, really? Yeah. I turn my head towards her, hands still on my hair. It was a sarcastic question. Oh, but you are. I stand up fully, again, take the paper and pencil, and walk back to the desk. She follows me. You two would make a cute pair. Oh, God, stop it. I'm not going to tell him I like him. Imagine when he says that he doesn't like me. The awkwardness when we're in the same room and we're roommates. I whisper yell. She sighs in response. We have known for two days. We've only known each other for two days. What do you think I'm going to do? Tell him? I have a fat crush on him already? He probably would change his room and avoid me. He wouldn't. And how do you know that? She smiles. Because I have a feeling that there will happen to be something between you two. The way he listened to you talking when that girl talked, he was normal. But then when you started to talk, he smiled. What the hell does that mean? I roll my eyes. Just wait and see. She walks away to a table where a new customer sat a couple minutes ago. I sigh, turn around and take a look at Charlie. Then Vivian turned to me. Out of nowhere, she turns back. 
I turn away again in the same second and walk in the back room. I take my stuff r ready on the table, which is the nearest from the desk. So when I leave, I just grab them. I take a cappuccino and a latte with double sugar, which Charlie said he wanted this morning. I put them in a small covered cardboard bag, put a croissant also in there because one was left. We can take pastries home at the end of shift if there's any leftovers or those go in the trash. I lock the doors and turn off the lights and take my stuff from the table. I start walking alone in the empty streets. I open the building's door, walk to the third floor, take my keys from my pocket, but just when I'm about to open the door, I hear music coming from the room and singing. I stop my movements and listen. I really don't hear the words, just mumbling. He's playing his violin. I smile and open the door as quietly as I can so he doesn't stop. I close the door, push off my shoes, I firstly didn't recognize the song, but when he sings in the night, the stormy night, she'd fly, I froze, because it's Paradise by Coldplay. He doesn't sing the repeated para-para-paradise paragraph. I just listen. He plays beautifully. He's playing the instrument that he said he never would. How it sounds so right. No wrong chords. He plays it perfectly, and his voice, God, why he has that amazing voice. When he starts singing the next part, my legs move again. I tiptoe to the bedroom and stand in the door frame. He has the violin on his left side against his neck and shoulder. Standing in the middle of the room, his body is moving beautifully along with the music. I smile so widely my cheeks hurt. But I can't do anything else other than watch. Be as still as I can. Do not make the smallest noise, because I don't want him to stop. I know he will, if he got to know that I'm staring at him. I'm blushing so fucking badly. My stomach is full of butterflies. He continues singing. I take a deep breath after realizing I haven't breathed for some time. He starts to sing the next para para paradise paragraph, and then he turned around, his eyes slightly closed. There is a little black plug on his ear, probably the thing which tells him the chords, or what he even explained then. He started to move a bit, taking small steps a bit everywhere. I cross my arms and lean against the doorframe, which was a big mistake. My bag hit it. He stops playing. I froze. So does he. Staring at him with wide eyes, his back towards me again, he drops his hands, the two objects in his hands. I hate you, Nick. He turns around, looking very disappointed. Sorry. I didn't want you to stop because I knew you would stop if I say anything. He sighs and puts his violin back on the floor at the end of his bed. Please don't stop. I would love to hear you play more. He sits on the floor. You didn't say you could sing. My voice isn't the best. It is, Charlie, for real. He shakes his head and stands up. No. He takes the plug out of his ear and places it into a small box and then puts the box in his dresser drawer. But why? It's embarrassing, Nick. I don't want you to hear me play. I frown, walk fully into the room, and place my bag down. Are you angry at me? No, I need a shower. He walks out of the room, this time not hitting the doorframe. I just stand there, confused. Did he really get angry at me? I walk over to the bathroom door and knock. Charlie? Hmm? I hear the clothes dropping on the floor. I don't want you to be angry at me. I'm sorry I didn't say anything when I came in here. I just... Your voice kind of froze me. I clear my throat. 
I didn't want you to stop because you have an amazing voice and amazing skills. God, um, and if you want, you can sing and play here anytime. Even if I'm here. Maybe you don't want to, but I would love that. He's quiet. Sorry. I just kept talking, mode on. Um... I have your latte with double sugar. It's on the table. But, um, I gotta do homework now. Bye. I speed walk in the bedroom, all flustered. I close the door and flop on my bed. Rub my face with my hands. God, I am falling. I whisper. Charlie. I turn the shower on quick as possible so Nick wouldn't hear me crying. I sit down, head on my knees, hugging my legs. The hot water falling on my head and back. I try to be as quiet as possible and just stop crying, but I can't. The tears just come out, but disappear straight after because of the running water. It's weird to cry in the shower when you can't feel the tears, but it's also relaxing. Very, very relaxing. After a couple minutes, I rub my face and stand up. My ass is hurting a bit because of the rock-hard floor. I take the shampoo. I have different bottles, so I know which one is what. And if I don't have different shaped bottles, I put tape on the side or damage the side of the plastic with a knife or something so I know the difference. I pour the shampoo on my hand, then close the bottle, put it back down, and start to rub it in my hair. While the shampoo is in my hair, I take a washing sponge, pour some body gel on it, and wet it, and start to rub my skin. First my left arm, my chest, my stomach, right arm, my sides, hips, thighs, shins, calves, feet, then a second round. Last, I rub my back. Then I wash the sponge. It's not necessary, but I do it when I have very exact systems on how to shower because of my OCD. It's very bad in the shower. And when I brush my teeth, I firstly have to brush the lower right side, then left, upper right side, then left side. And while making toast, firstly, I take stuff i take the toast butter ham cheese salad cucumber and put the stuff back in the fridge exact amount exact sequence every single time and if i have the littlest amount of crumb of any trash in my bed i have to vacuum the whole thing or i can't even touch it or if one of my clothes smell a bit of sweat I wash everything from socks to my shirts. I know, not very ecological. I feel bad of doing it, but I can't put any clothes off before that. And that's why I really don't have many clothes, because if I wash everything, it takes a lot of chemicals and time. I walk out of the bathroom, towel around my chest. Nick? I ask. I don't hear him. Yeah? He asks loudly from the bedroom door. I put up my left arm behind my back and walk over there, pretending I'm rubbing my back. When I walk past, I pull my hand in front of me. I open my closets, take my pajamas from the third shelf, and place them on my bed. Did you have something? What? You called my name. Oh, I just wondered where you were. Okay, I'll go in the living room then. Then the door closes. I sigh and drop the towel in the same second. Reach for the clothes. Sorry, I forgot my phone. The door opens. Nick! The door sh slams shut. It's quiet. My heart is beating fast. I'm frozen in place. I guess he is too, but behind the door. Sorry, Charlie. I I didn't think you 
You were already changing after I walked out. He yelled panicked. I clear my throat. It, it's fine. I take a deep breath, grab my pants, and pull them on, then a shirt. After that, I take my towel from the floor and rush out of the room. Nick's still standing there. I'm so sorry, Charlie. It's okay, Nick. I go to the bathroom and place my towel to dry, then walk out. Where is the coffee? I ask to change the subject. On the table. Okay, thanks. I smile and walk over there. I put my hand on top of the table and slowly move them. I hit it, grab it, and set at the table. I take a sip. It's not very hot anymore, but I don't mind. I sit on my bed listening to Tori's message. Nick is on his bed, looking at his phone maybe. I don't know. He's quiet. We both have been quiet since when he walked into my room while I was getting changed. I don't know. Did he see anything? I hope not. I'm going to the bathroom, Nick says, soon. He's out of the room. I take my chance to start to speak the message to Tori. Everything is okay. I hung out with Vivian today. We got along very well. She's very nice, and we went to the cafe where Nick works now. I ate a pastry and a salad. When I came back here with Vivian, um, I don't know what else. Second day went very well at school, and um, I don't really have anything else. I laugh a bit, stop the recording, and wait to see if she sends anything back. But Nick walks in, so I just shut my phone and take my AirPods off. Do you want to go to sleep now? Um, yeah. I lift my blanket up and sit on the bed. Good night, Nick. Charlie? Hmm? He doesn't respond anymore, so I sit up towards him, legs crossed. I'm really sorry about earlier, but I just walked in. I will knock next time. I just... I didn't... I didn't expect you to be so fast when I... Nick... It's really fine. He sighs. Are you sure? I smile. I'm sure. And, um, are you okay? I frowned. My heart skipped a beat from nervousness. Yeah, I, um, I... He swallows so even I can hear it across the room. I kind of saw your arm... He clears his throat, clearly nervous. He should say that. Oh. I turn my head down and swallow. It's... Is that from your past? Or... Do you... Um... Still do that? If... I can ask. Sorry, I, I shouldn't have asked that. Shit, I, I'm so sorry. I just, it's from my past. I say over him. Take a deep breath after. Okay. Do you want to talk about it? Not really. Okay. But if you do still have urges to do that, I don't respond. I thought... It's not a question until he speaks again. You don't have to tell me, obviously, but if you want to talk to me, I would prefer to do anything else rather than listen. Because I don't want you to feel that bad ever. He almost whispers the last sentence. I nod, keep my head down. I, um, I cough, surprised. I start talking, but I continue feeling weird if I stop now when I already started. I don't do that nowadays. I do have urges sometimes, not very often. I just, um, I swallow. If you could not tell people about this? Uh, of course not. I'm... Wasn't even going to. I nod. 
it's just something I'm very insecure about. I've only seen them with the amount of vision I have, and um, I really don't want people to know that. I stand up, and he stands up and sits next to me. I promise you, Char, I'm never ever going to say a thing about this to anyone, okay? I promise it with all I have. I smile. What? He asks. I lift my head. Char? He went quiet, probably staring at me with wide eyes, mouth open. I... that just slipped out. He says nervously. I laugh. Say it again. No. I like it. It's cute. He sighs. No, I'm never calling you that again. He's smiling. Mean. He laughs, and soon we are quiet again, in awkward silence. I won't tell anyone, Charlie, I promise. I nod. Thank you. Can I hug you? Um, yeah, sure. I smile. Soon his strong arms. God, he really was strong. Those arms around me, pulling my face onto his chest, making me blush like an idiot. But luckily, he doesn't see that. Not right now. Maybe when he pulls back, but I wish that's not soon. This is so comfy, like our souls meet. Okay. That sounded very weird. But it's true. Nick's hugs are like magic. Yes, we've hugged now only three times, but I can say that. You smell so good. He mumbles onto my hair, making me laugh. What? You smell good, too. I feel his whole body freeze. Nick? He clears his throat and then pulls away. Sorry, I, I really didn't mean to say that. His whole body is tensed, making him look even larger from his chest and arms when he pushes himself up a bit to sit straight forwards. Well, that didn't help the shade of dark red on my face. It's okay. I said you smell good, too. I try to help his embarrassment. He breathes out hardly. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but I wrap my arms around him from his side. Charlie. I pull back. I didn't mean that you should stop that. He laughs. I nod. I just... wanted to ask that. That you could tell me if you felt that bad again. I didn't want to bring this up again. I guess you didn't want to either, but I just want to know if you could talk to me then. I could, I think. Yeah. Good. He's smiling again. Nick. We should go to sleep now. I ask after we've been sitting in silence, maybe for a minute. Yeah, your day starts at eight. Yeah. I nod. Mine at eleven, but I can help you to your classes and come back. He smiles. You don't have to. Vivian said she's come coming by. Oh, okay. I smile, swallow. What? I frown. What, what? He smirks. Are you jealous? What? What? No! Why would I... He shrugs. You sound like that. Okay, but I'm not. Whatever you say, I groan. I am not. Good night, Nick. He pulls his blanket over him and lays down. I sigh and stand up. I'm not jealous of that. And good night to you, too. I walk over to my bed and sit down, stare at his face for a second before laying down. I wake up and check the time. I sigh and turn to face the wall. Close my eyes again, but I hear a sniff. I frown. When there is another one, I sit up, look over to Charlie. He's under his blanket, 
curled into a small ball. I think there's a knot on the blanket. I stand up and walk over to his bed. I sit down and wait for a second if to see if he notices me, but I guess not. So I slowly place my hand, maybe on his side. He winces, but doesn't move or make any noises now. Charlie, why are you crying? He sniffs again. Hey, what's wrong? Nothing, he mumbles, his voice shaky and low. If nothing is wrong, why would you cry at 4 a.m.? He breathes out. It's nothing, really. You can go back to sleep. I'm not going to get any sleep if I don't know what's bothering you, I whisper. He sniffs, swallows, so when he breathes out, it's loud and more clear, like he's able to breathe again. Can I see your face? No. Please. It's really nothing. I'm just a fucking crybaby and I cry about everything. It, it'll go away. I sigh. I'm still waiting. He breathes out. Are you going to give up? No. I really am not going to do that. Then he sits up next to me, wiping and covering his face with his hands. I turn more towards him, my left leg crossed on his mattress. You can tell me, Charlie. He sniffs. He swallows. What is it? Just... When you stopped me playing violin. I... Did... Did that really... Was that so bad? No, it just... He takes a deep breath. You can tell me everything, Charlie. If it's something you don't want me to say to anyone else, I won't, I promise. You sure? I smile. One hundred percent sure. After a couple minutes, taking deep breaths, he starts to speaking. When I started playing violin, I was maybe in year nine. And I was in a music block of my old school and practicing. He swallows. And... Um, I was bullied by some boys from a year higher, just some basic assholes, and then a couple of them came in there and started to throw some words on me, some really bad words. I really don't want to say them, and then after a couple minutes, they took my violin and um, a couple teardrops from his eyes. I grab his hand, blushing from that, but I ignore it. They started throwing it around. He's sobbing now. My eyes water, too. Just seeing him crying, it hurts me. And it was after school, so there wasn't many people around who could help me. And they threw it at me a couple times, and I fell on the ground, and I got a pretty bad concussion from it. I was so, so scared. And, um, yeah. He wipes his face. I pull him into a hug and start sobbing even louder. I rub his back, not really knowing what to say for now. He clearly isn't able to speak because he's crying. I can't believe how scared you were. But I can't imagine how awful that must have been, I whisper. It's just, after that, I haven't played in front of anyone, only in my own room. It really caused some kind of trauma to me. I managed to say that before starting to sob again. I'm so sorry you experienced that. After a couple minutes, he's breathing on my chest. A couple sobs coming sometimes. I'm still rubbing his back up and down. I'm sorry if I reminded you of that. By being creepy and sneaking in here to listen to your amazing playing and voice. He giggles, making me smile and blush even more. It's okay. But if you want and feel like playing, you can. 
if I'm here. I won't judge you. Instead, I would love to listen to you. It was very beautiful and relaxing to watch. Okay. But I understand if you don't feel confident to do that. You don't have to. But if you want to, please do. I groan and he laughs now. Maybe I will. Maybe not. I wish you would. We're quiet again. Are you okay now? Or should we go to sleep? He pulls away. I'm better now. Thank you. I smile. For what? I don't know. <laughs> Just being you. He plays with my fingers. You don't have to thank me for that. I just want to help if I can, in any way. He nods. Okay. Let's get some sleep now. I pat his shoulder and stand up, but then he grabs my hand. I stop and look at him in surprise to how he managed to grab my hand so perfectly. Um, he let go and sits up again. Could you... I turn towards him fully. Could you sleep here? He asks shyly. I smile nervously. In in your bed? You don't have to. I just... Never mind. That was a stupid suggestion. No. I clear my throat. I didn't mean to yell that loud or even yell. I can sleep next to you if that helps. He nods. I walk over to my bed, take my pillow, and place it next to Charlie's. Wall or inside. Wall. Okay. He lays down. I shift his blanket up and lay down next to him, being sure I don't touch him. If I would, I don't know. It just would feel weird, I guess. My shoulder goes over the side. I try to be as small as possible. I sleep very wildly normally, so wake me up if I'm crushing you on the wall. We laugh. Okay. Wake me up if I steal all the blankets. I usually wrap myself in it somehow. Like a burrito. We laugh again. Yeah. Charlie's spring burrito would taste very good. We He giggles, but I froze. What the fuck did you just say? Do you have enough space? Yeah. He frowns. Sit up and touch my side, making me blush again when I just recovered. You don't. You can say that, Nick. He moves more to the side. I move too, now being completely on the bed. Even a bit more. Thanks. I smile. He's laying on his side. Sorry, I'm very large. Did you just apologize for your body size? I look at him. Um, kind of. He sighs. Please don't. What bigger you are, you have better chances to get a partner. I frowned, ignoring the fact of how flustered I am. And what does that mean? Well, normally boys with small bodies, people don't pay attention to at all. But boys with larger bodies do. A lot. <laughs> and same about girls. But bigger you are, no one even thinks about crushing on you. And the smaller you are, you get better chances to find love. I, for real, hate the world. <laughs> I agree. It's just the people. It's very hard to find love these days when... The only thing people care about is looks, not personality. He sighs. Like, do you think the person's body will be exactly the same in 40 years? Hell no, it won't. We laugh. That's true. Have you been in a relationship? Or are you? I hold my breath. I just... I should just shut up already. No. Never. Do you want one? Doesn't everyone? Not everyone. Don't you? Wh what? Yes. 
I, I do. I smile. He just nods. It's hard. Finding love when I'm blind. And if you have some injury, people just think we aren't normal. That we don't need love, but that's the thing everyone needs. And I have found it from friends mostly and family. Yeah. All I would now want to say is that I like you. I have a fucking fat crush on you, but I don't. How's your hand? Oh, um, better. Okay. Don't you dare say sorry. He reminds, taking, making us both laugh. Do you have a crush on anyone? He asks. What? Do you? I don't. I blush. Luckily, he can't see that. Who? I look at him. No one. He sighs. Fine. They would be happy if they knew that. I promise, when you say you like someone, they will respond with the exact same words. He groans. What are you, then? I smirk, covering my secret. What? No! No, no, no. Why are you blushing, then? I'm not. You so are. You're red as an apple. He groans. I am not. Oh, well. Who's your crush, then? He sighs. I don't have a crush. You sure? I smirk. Maybe I do have one, but I won't tell it to you. Ever. Why would I tell you my crush, then? Because, um... Hmm. Hmm? Is that your answer? Hmm? Mm Mm-hmm. I laugh. He just smiles. Give me more detail. He's nice. I groan. Come on. Okay, okay. He thinks for a second. My crush is a boy. Mine is two. He answers. No shit. You're gay. We laugh. Fine. Um, he has brown eyes. Something more? Nope. Charlie! No, Nick. I sigh. You just told me your crush is a boy. Something more, too? He has black hair. I froze, waiting if that was too much, and he realizes. But he doesn't. I really don't know anyone's hair color or even their looks. Very good detail. What you want me to say? His name? Not gonna happen. He groans. I'm blind, and I want to know. What do you think? That I'm going to tell everyone? Well, no. Yeah, so give me the first little letter of their name, or something. I sigh. <sighs> Fine. His name starts with C. Okay, now I need to find someone whose name starts with C. I smile. He is very dim. Or then he just thinks he's blonde. Anyway, good night now. He turns to the other side, facing the wall. I stare at the back of his hair, smiling. Good night, Char. Charlie. You were going to say it. He yells. I for real wasn't. Fine. He mumbled, annoyed. I smile again, turn to my side, so I just stare at his soft hair, wanting to touch it. Even one curl. But I know if I do, he will feel it. Good night, Charlie. Good night, Nick, he says. Then the whole room went quiet. His crush has brown eyes, and he's nice. Where would he know anyone's eye color? He only knows mine. Maybe Vivian's also. I told him I have brown eyes, and once he said I'm nice, could there be a change? Could there be a chance that this could be me? Maybe, maybe not. I would want that, but there is also the fact that his crush might be from somewhere else where he lived. For sure it is. Besides, Charlie is already maybe asleep. He didn't 
put his earplugs on, probably was just too tired to do that. It's very late. 4.41 a.m. I sigh and try to get everything off my mind and out of my dreams to get some sleep before my alarm goes off. And that is the end of today's chapter. I really hope that you guys enjoyed. That took me forever. So I really got I ooh words. I really hope that you guys enjoyed. I will be reading chapter five next time. I hope that you guys like it. Um, I will see you guys in the next video. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Goodbye, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between. Like, subscribe, and comment down below. I also have an Instagram, Alec123, um, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, friends.